Happy birthday, dear Laura. Happy birthday to you. Two thousand and seven was a big year for Amy Winehouse. Maybe her biggest. Her celebrity would reach all-time highs. Having already conquered England, Back to Black would be released and shoot to number one in the States. Almost every month her music was winning awards. Amy would finally marry long-time interest Blake Fielder Civil and a feud with rival Lily Allen saw their jabs circulating the tabloids constantly. This is the story of Amy Winehouse through 2007. As January begins, the Brit Awards announce Amy is up for Best British Female Solo Artist, with her main competition being Lily Allen. Back to Black, at this time, is currently hovering around the number one position, often dropping before bouncing back. Around this time, articles come out on how to get the Amy look, pale foundation and black hair dye are referenced. 13th of January, Amy is interviewed by the Guardian newspaper. She admits she's an aggressive drunk and hates that side of her. She states she'd love to go back to the 60s and go out with the Ronettes. When asked how she'd like to be remembered, she states, as genuine. In an interview with The Observer a few days later, Amy echoes her previous statement about her aggression while drinking. She states, I'm a terrible drunk. I don't know where that comes from. She answers questions about the controversy surrounding her weight loss, stating, I used to smoke weed until 8 in the morning until 3 in the morning. Then I stopped, started going to the gym, lost a bit of weight. Now I'm a terrible role model. It's a joke. She insists she's living a healthy life, drinking carrot, beetroot, celery and ginger throat juice. She states her current boyfriend Alex Clare is a chef and can cook anything, but he doesn't. Amy does all the cooking. She states her favourite food is Indian. 23rd of January, Amy receives a prize for Best Pop Album at the South Bank Show Awards. In the interviews afterwards, Amy comes to the defence of Jade Goody, who at the time was facing controversy over alleged racism. While staying at London's Savoy Hotel, Amy and friends drink in the bar area and begin singing loudly. Guests complain and the manager tells her to quiet down and suggests she go to bed. When papers question the Savoy, they respond, We don't comment on guests. As January ends, it's announced Amy will be performing live at the Brit Awards instead of Lily Allen. It causes resentment and rumours circulate Lily Allen won't even show up now. Amy, knowing how important the Brits are, vows to stay sober for the event. In the meantime though, Amy continues to drink heavily and is seen out on pub crawls with good friend Kelly Osborne. February 1st, Amy performs at the Meteor Irish Music Awards. She leaves the event quickly afterwards to play Paul in a pub. In the days following, Lily Allen reportedly on the insistence of her father Keith Allen decides she will go to the Brit Awards after all. Meanwhile, Amy tells reporters she'll be taking her boyfriend Alex and her parents to the Brit Awards. She predicts the Arctic Monkeys will beat her for Best Album. 12th of February, Amy wins the award for Best Music Act at the L Style Music Awards. When she gives a speech, she declares her style icon is her nan. At the time, rumours circulate about a duet with Pete Doherty. Three days later, the Brit Awards is held. Amy arrives in a yellow dress before changing into a red dress to perform live. Afterwards, she changes into a black and white dress and later wins Best Female Solo Artist. As she predicted, she loses Album of the Year to the Arctic Monkeys. Lily Allen is present and though nominated four times wins nothing. This aggravates her and her mood turns sour. But in fairness, Lily Allen is a really talented songwriter in her own right. Her 
music unfortunately was overshadowed by Amy's and she also had a knack for upsetting people. Lee of course is renowned for slagging off people Ooh. in the press. Like turning on certain people's shows on Radio One, listening to the same old tripe. You're not being funny to me, Lydia, but I didn't make my album for your child. Still, she deserved to walk away with at least Best British Breakthrough Act. But then again, the raconteurs deserve to win Best International Breakthrough Act. So what can you do? A fan approaches Lily afterwards and tells her, "You should have won instead of Amy." To which she replies, "I fucking know." When the two see each other, her and Amy get into a blazing row. Lily also goes mad at John Fratelli, who won British Breakthrough Act, calling him a cut. After the event, the press reports scars on Amy's arm. Her spokesman puts it down to a fall while drunk in New York. By this point, Back to Black has sold 700,000 copies. Meanwhile, Lily Allen is reported saying her and Amy are friends and denies crying over their fight in Heathrow Airport. Amy tours dates around the UK for the next two weeks. Early March, Amy and Alex Clare break up. She goes on a drinking binge and is seen searching for wine in a supermarket. At this time, Back to Black is released in the States. It debuts at number seven, the most successful of any British female artist ever. Amy travels to the States to perform in New York and Texas. When Amy returns to the UK, it's made clear her relationship with Blake Fielder Civil has been rekindled. For the end of March and beginning of April, Amy is divided between Blake and Alex, so goes back and forth to each of them. This stops when Blake proposes to her on the 18th of April. Amy accepts and the two plan their wedding for a month's time. The papers report the news and Amy makes a few short statements saying she wants to be with Blake for the rest of her life. Meanwhile, over in America, Amy's popularity is growing enormously. At this time, concerns still circulate about her drinking and drug use. Close friend Kelly Osborne is asked and states, Amy isn't as bad as everyone says she is. I'm worse, but I'm good at hiding it. Kelly Osborne had a long battle with drugs and alcohol, checking into rehab numerous times. Her last check-in was in 2021. Following her engagement to Blake, Amy embarks on a short tour of the US. At this time, Lily Allen takes a jab at Amy, stating, I'm in such a bad way, I'm worse than Amy Winehouse. Amy responds by saying people like Lily Allen can't hack the pace of touring. May 18th, Amy and Blake are married. Amy phones Kelly Osborne, ecstatic to tell her the news. A celebration is planned. May 24th, Amy wins the Ivor Novell Award for Rehab. Meanwhile, plans are made for Amy and Lily Allen to duet at the MTV Video Music Awards in September. Amy's popularity continues to soar in the US, and June's edition of Rolling Stone feature her on the cover. June 3rd, Amy performs at MTV's Movie Awards. Five days later, Amy performs at the Isle of Wight Festival. When she arrives in the hotel, she orders 24 bottles of champagne. At this time, Amy begins treating her favourite pub, the Holy Arms, like her own home. She goes behind the bar, pours herself drinks, chooses which songs to play through the jukebox and sometimes serves customers who are waiting. 18th of June, Amy wins Song of the Year for Rehab at the Mojo Awards. Four days later, Amy plays at Glastonbury. Before the show, she orders two bottles of wine, one bottle of vodka, one bottle of champagne, one bottle of brandy, one case of beer, 40 Marlboro Lights, chocolate, and three pizzas, insisting they're good quality pizzas. She also requests two sober, competent local crew, as well as parking as close to the stage as possible. She plays the Pyramid Stage in the afternoon and the Jazz World Stage in the evening. In between sets, her and Blake spend their time in a rented teepee at Camp Carla just outside the grounds. July 7th, 
Amy is scheduled to play tea in the park. She pulls out, citing exhaustion due to non-stop touring. August 6th, Amy and Blake begin a pub crawl around Camden. Two days later, Amy is rushed to University College London Hospital at 1am after collapsing. A spokesperson states it's due to exhaustion. August 12th, Amy appears in the Daily Mail talking about her suspected overdose. The News of the World reports she's staying in a hotel with her husband and both sets of parents. Amy is adamant she doesn't want to go to rehab. Friends and family are at a loss of what to do. A week later, Lily Allen throws shots at Amy while performing live. Lily pours herself a shot of Jägermeister, raises her glass and states, Here's to Amy Winehouse. Ha! Later in the set, she states, All these skinny girls in the magazines, look at me, look at me, heroin addicts. Following this, Amy's doctor advises her to cancel her US tour and rest. The tour is cancelled. Amy at this time checks into the Sanderson Hotel. With all the chaos of the month, her and Blake hope to relax in comfort. August 23rd, Amy and Blake are pictured bruised and bloodied after an altercation in their hotel. On Looker's state, Blake looked like he'd been attacked by a wild cat. After the commotion, a hotel worker rang the police. The couple were asked to leave and check into Covent Garden Hotel. Around this time, countless celebrities publicly state their concern for Amy. Lily Allen sends her a card and flowers wishing her well. September 5th, Amy plays live at the Mercury Prize Awards. She loses out to the Claxons for Best Album. Even though Amy's won every award going, it's still a controversial loss. September 9th, the MTV Music Awards goes on without Amy, who's on doctor's orders to rest, and Lily Allen, who's banned from America for allegedly punching a photographer. Had they both attended, they were to sing together. September 14th, Amy turns 24. Blake buys her a jukebox and organises a party at a London club. Five days later, Amy performs at the MOBO Awards. She takes home the award for Best UK Female. 8th of October, Amy wins Best Album at the Q Awards. She doesn't turn up to accept it, and host Jonathan Ross makes a joke at her expense. He himself had won an award earlier in the year for Worst Dressed Person. Meanwhile, Amy continues her autumn tour. 18th of October, Amy is arrested for possession of cannabis. Friends state they used to worry about her cannabis use, but now look back on those days fondly. It's soon that, rather than the harder drugs. 1st of November, Amy wins Brand New Artist Choice Award at the MTV Europe Music Awards. Eight days later, Blake is arrested for perverting the course of justice. He allegedly attempted to bribe a barman to keep quiet about assault charges he was currently facing. He's held in remand. Amy fears if she herself gets a conviction, she will be banned from playing in the US. The year ends with Amy awaiting her trial on the 29th of February 2008, while Blake is being held at Pentonville Prison until his trial begins. Thank you to everyone who supports the channel. If you wish to donate, it would be greatly appreciated as this is my main source of income. Just click the three symbols next to the video, then the thanks icon, and however much you wish to donate. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.